Today uh, we have Steve Oliver from Music Magpie and uh, thank you very much for joining us Steve. Um, uh, it would be great for you to take part in these, uh, this new mini-series that we're doing which is uh, interviewing different e-commerce business leaders um, about life during and after Covid and how you are adapting and innovating in the world of e-commerce and marketplaces. Uh, so to kick us off, uh, please can you give us an intro about yourself, your role at Music Magpie, and of course Music Magpie itself. Oh wow, how long have we got? I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. So yeah, I'm Steve, uh, the co-founder actually. So the business started in uh, my garage in, uh, in uh, Hazel Grove in Stockport in 2007. Uh, and actually I spent the morning in our first DC, uh, which we still got, in Macclesfield. Um, but yeah, we're still based in Stockport, uh, offices at Stockport Exchange, main DCs in, in Hazel Grove, uh, and we also have the original one in Macclesfield, as I say. From the off, really, of, of launching Music Magpie, I use a phrase, the lazy man's eBay. So what the model does when we buy from consumers is um, it allows people to sell on site to us, get a fixed valuation, uh, whether it be our original uh, product categories of CDs, DVDs and games, or now 70% of our business is consumer technology. So led by mobile phones, but also tablets and consoles and MacBooks, etc. cetera. Um, people go onto the site, get a valuation. Um, we provide the logistics, you drop it off um, or we come and pick it up from you. And the day it arrives with us in our warehouse, we pay into your bank account on the same day. So that's the buying side of our business where somebody is selling to us. The other half of the business is then obviously what we do with that product. And the answer is we refurbish it again, whether it's our old world CDs and DVDs, polish it, change the case, etc., make it look uh, as close to new as possible. And the same with a mobile phone, check the battery, replace the screen, give it a polish, make it look as close to new as possible. Um, delight the customer when we resell it. We sell it with a 12 month warranty, put it in a nice new box, um, make it as close to the experience as buying a brand new product. But of course the mantra of the, the business is um, it's smart for you and it's smart for the planet. Um, sustainability is a huge issue now in the world and rightly so of course and one that the modern day consumer is understanding more and more. So um, we very much play to that of giving products a second life. So. Um, I promise to keep it short, and I probably haven't, so I'll no, stop. Was, yeah, it was really good. Um, and uh, a, a side note on that is, uh, it's interesting how you, as a company, with you start off the name Music Magpie, it denotes yeah. music. And uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of the business, so follow it quite, quite a lot. And you've got, uh, going into consumer tech, um, you, you've stuck with the name, and you've still had that great fan base and great user base that still work with you. Um, so yeah, congratulations to that. Yeah, I think we, we have considered the brand. Obviously, it's been a hot topic a couple of times over the years, but actually we got such um, brand trust and domain authority from a fairly early stage that we decided not to get too stressed about the yeah. presence of the word music in the brand. We do actually own magpie.com now as a brand name, but actually, you know, car phone warehouse uh, aren't selling car phones out of a warehouse anymore. Um, <laughs> And as my nephew said many years ago, and, and cell fridges don't sell fridges. And I was like, well, that's a bit different. But um, yeah. uh, we, I don't think you can get too hung up on the brand name. And I think people uh, know now what the business is and what it stands for. Yeah, well, it's, um, again, I remember when I was a kid seeing the uh, the adverts on TV. So still still great to, to see it going um, cool. as busy as it is. Um, okay, so um, covid has yeah. it uh, affected the business in any way and how has it been during lockdown? Um, yeah, I mean, I have to say that, that uh, we're in the um, very, very fortunate position. We, we have felt blessed, you know. It's a mix of uh, good fortune for the business uh, and I guess some good judgment along the line, uh, along the years, uh, that COVID is actually, we're in that very small bracket where it's, affected us uh, very positively actually in our trading. So from an early stage um, when, you know, it, indeed our office, you know, went home within the space of 48 hours, everybody went home working from home. So with the world going to work from home, wanting to stay connected suddenly, you know, people who didn't own a tablet or a mobile phone, such as parents, elderly parents, 
uh, wanted to stay connected with work people and family and friends. I think we've all done lots and lots of Zooming and, and looking at a screen over the last 12, 13 weeks. Uh, but also, again, you know, I'll reference our old category of CDs, DVDs, games, and in particular books. Um, you know, our, the, the warehouse that I've been to this morning was our book warehouse. Our book sales have nearly trebled um, in the last quarter. Um, it's just been nuts. And our challenge, in a sense, has been in the other direction about making sure that we didn't swamp our operations with volume. The products were so in demand. Um, and also bear in mind, people had more time at home to sell to us as well as wanting to buy from us. So we had to be really careful because whilst we got our office home, the operations, um, obviously, we have to do on site. Uh, and we had to spend a lot of time making sure they were happy, comfortable, felt confident coming to work, felt safe. Uh, we made a lot of operational changes with social distancing, etc. So that's been the big change for us. But I have to say, you know, we you know, look at so many other businesses, great businesses that have been cut off at the knees. We've been really fortunate in that, you know, both our year on year sales are up, but also, um, you know, we have had to manage that volume. Uh, carefully with price at times and uh, you know in real capitalist terms that means our margins gone up a little bit so yeah it's um, you know it's been an extraordinary time but you know it'll be a social and business study for generations to come won't it this whole thing but I have to say you know we we do count ourselves very lucky to have, have traded positively. Well it's certainly a moment in time um, the, I have a question around uh, obviously you operate in a marketplace uh, a marketplace model with yep. the unique part that you actually buy the product up right. front before it's resold. So going into, of, of course, uh, you've got years of historical data of what should sell and when, but the market of COVID was unknown going into it. So um, did you, were you apprehensive of at the volumes of the, of the buying side of the business? Were you apprehensive to outlay that cash betting on it being sold with a potential economic downturn. Um, that's the first part of the question. The next part is, um, were you proactive or reactive to uh, COVID coming in? Um, I think um, both is, is the cop-out answer slightly in terms of proactive and, and reactive. Um, from a very early stage, it was obvious that our products were, you know, sort of literally within the first 24, 48 hours of people working from home, the demand for consumer tech products started to go up. Uh, the physical media perhaps was a little bit slower where people got home and thought, well, hang on, there's no live sport on anymore or whatever, I, I need a box set. And of course, it's all very fragmented these days where you need not just Sky, but Amazon and, uh, and there's BritBox these days and Netflix and now there's Disney Plus. So actually people return to watching uh, visual content uh, with box sets so you know that side of the business has been and we have been reactive with that um, but very proactive with things like our logistics so what we observed early on is that actually people selling to us certainly in the early stages of lockdown people thought well I, I want to uh, and the cash should come in handy but how do I get the product to music map I'm not leaving the house um, so actually we changed uh, very early on um, the logistics where we came and got with a courier everything with a contact free courier at the door so in the same way that we've all taken deliveries from online businesses um, consumers could just you know leave it on their doorstep and we would collect it and that was nationwide right away yeah absolutely yeah so all but the very most expensive of, of, of iPhones uh, we were then collecting from people's doorsteps and that was a big trigger in the business where actually then to fuel the demand we, we had on the sell side or selling, um, that the, to, to be able to buy more products and service the market of people who wanted to declutter, wanted to sell their old phone, wanted some additional cash. Um, that was a big change in the business that we had to, to put through. So, you know, I guess we, we had to react to what the market was selling us. We, the biggest thing I've learned in particular in the last couple of years and probably should have learned it many years before, is always put the customer first. Go and ask them. Go and research them. Talk to them and say, what do you want us to do? What product? What service? How do we make our service better? Um, what offer could we offer you, you know, now or in the future that would, you know, service your need? And I think that, that is where 
any online business has to be very proactive in what it's doing. But go and listen to the most important person in your business, the customer. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's absolutely true. I'm glad I've learned that lesson right now, rather than waiting. I'm sure I'd listen to someone. I'm sure you know that more than anyone. I appreciate that, man. Um, well, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you, you mentioned declutter uh, as a kind of a, an exclamation word, but how is um, the US side of the business going during this as well? Has it been growing? Yeah, e equally positively. Um, it lagged a little bit behind the UK in its performance. Um, there was one or two interesting dynamics went over on uh, we're in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Um, the Georgia governor is an extraordinary character who makes uh, Trump look a very run-of-the-mill kind of guy. Um, so very early on, he talked about shutting down the state completely, including online fulfillment warehouses, which were always, you know, the, the UK government always committed to keeping those open, encouraging online to stay open. So actually, we, we moved all our US stock from the US overnight, and I mean overnight, back to the UK so it didn't get trapped if, if we were forced to lock down. Mm. Uh, within a week, they seemed to seemingly changed their mind and said, no, we'll keep online open. Um, a couple of weeks after that, uh, we were looking at our sales figures one morning and said, what on earth has gone on in the US? Something must be broken uh, because our sales have doubled, nearly trebled, uh, and it was the stimulus checks arriving. With US consumers. So every US consumer got given $1,200, uh, which given that Trump hates Amazon, and but 50% of US online money is spent on Amazon, where do you think everybody went and spent that money? Um, <laughs> so they spent some of it with us. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and then actually, latterly, um, the, the, the governor in Georgia and the, the local mayors, etc., have reopened faster than we have here. So in their wisdom, they reopened nail bars, tattoo parlors, yeah. and hairdressers before they did restaurants, which is, anyway, that's their business. But um, yeah, we have traded as positively, slightly different time frame. Um, but again, the US consumer, you know, has seemed really, really keen to sort of both sell into us uh, and, and buy from us. Yeah, amazing. Well, um, okay, so uh, a little bit of a show us your crystal ball at the moment, but what, what do you see the future of e-commerce? Of course, you operate that marketplace model where um, you don't get necessarily caught with your pants down holding lots of stock. Um, whereas some retailers have been caught quite badly during uh, the last three, four months with holding stock. Um, where do you see the biggest change in e-commerce moving forward? Um, I mean, just the sheer um, permanent structural change that has occurred in consumer spending in the last quarter. You know, John Roberts at AO has, has said, you know, five years worth of growth in five weeks. I, I tend to agree with that. I heard uh, the head of retail for KPMG say that in cool. China, um, pre-COVID, um, uh, in terms of overall retail spend, pre-COVID, it was 28% was online. Post-COVID, now the shops have reopened over there it's 50% of spend is now online. You know, there's that massive acceleration of people who, both new people to online. So again, I'm gonna reference, you know, more elderly or mature people who've now converted to buying physically, to buying online, and perhaps they have to learn how to do it with grocery, uh, but now they'll do it more and more. So I think there's a new demographic uh, who's come online, more volume, you know, I talked to our logistics and couriers partners. They've got suddenly twice the volume going through their networks. This is a massive structural yeah. change that is happening in the world and once in a generation. Yeah, I, re I really do, actually. Yeah, I think, you know, a bit like the queues outside Primark the day it reopens, there's a bit of sort of, you know, one-off adjustment early on, and then it, it may ebb down a little bit. But I think this is a real big permanent change where people have gone, actually, it's easy, isn't it? And I mean, I've always said that that's the responsibility of digital full stop. We have to service lazy and daft consumers that we all are. Nobody more so than me. We are all lazy and daft. And actually, we want things put in on a plate. Sites, apps, mobile sites have to be as easy, quick, hassle free as possible. And that's, that's what we've got to do to service this new generation. And actually, that includes plenty of, you know, more mature folk coming online for the first time it's fascinating it's uh you know this this will be studied for many years to come i'm sure as a big moment in 
consumer behaviour change. That's a great business to be in at the moment then in the, in the future, I reckon. Yeah, it is. And, in t- you know, in terms of you asked about the sort of dynamics of our stock, I mean, we turn our tech stock every, our chairman says, you know, our stock turn is faster than a sandwich shop uh, because we are literally churning our stock so quickly, uh, less than seven days typically. Uh, in terms of our whole tech stock, uh, uh, ter- turns over and, and resells. So, yeah, it's, um, it's it's a good time to be online. A terrible, I mean, you know, anyone who knows me, I grew up in a shop uh, above a shop. My dad had me behind the counter when I was eleven years old. Retail is in my blood. I love retail. Uh, Christmas before last was the first Christmas where I'd not had any physical shops at Christmas, and it broke my heart. I really miss them. But my gosh, is it a a terrible hard work for any retailer it was becoming more and more difficult for them anyway but now it's just accelerated and uh, yeah it's going to be hellishly difficult for them yeah well only time can tell what what uh, successful strategies will be had on that side yeah. um, so uh, if, if i'm not pressing you for too much time um the final thing is is a more specific question to uh, what you do at music magpie but have you seen more of an uplift in your third-party marketplaces, the Ebays, the Amazons of the world, or at musicmadpie.com? Am I? Uh, .co.uk. .com also gets you there. But, okay. um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a really interesting uh, question. So uh, the answer is definitely the latter. Um, we focus very much our efforts now. Um, our third-party platform partners, I mean, it's a proud claim to fame for the business, which I hope you'll excuse me for just rolling out the, uh, the soundbite that we're the world's biggest seller on Amazon and eBay in the history of both global platforms. Nobody ever has done more transactions on both of those uh, than us. We have over 10 million global feedbacks on both. So that was very much the history of the business and how we scaled it mm-hmm. to today's 150 million group turnover. But actually now, um, in the last two years in particular, the Music Magpie store, the direct sell, uh, became the biggest channel. Uh, so it, it overtook either of the other two. Then it overtook the other two added together. Wow. Uh, and now, I mean, my CFO told me last month we sold 94% of our phones on our own store. Um, so it's very much where we've taken ownership yeah. of the sales customer in the same way that we've had that long relationship with customers who we've bought from. Um, and that's been a massive strategic sea change in the business. And, you know, that's what you, you may have seen the recent TV adverts that have gone out, uh, both for the selling to us and our store. You know, we've relaunched. It's almost like a Pepsi challenge that we've done where here's a new phone. Here's a refurbished. They both do exactly the same thing. They've both got a 12 month warranty. They're both a lovely phone, do all the same things. This yeah. one's hundreds of pounds cheaper. And it's smarter for you because you save money um, and it's smarter for the planet. It's a refurbished phone and all those precious metals and minerals, et cetera, um, you know, are being preserved. So, um, yeah, we're driving the agenda very much sort of back to our own store. Well, it sounds like your uh, chief marketing officer, uh, Liam, would be uh, is, is as good at that as uh, tackling someone at knee height on a private side pitch, for sure. Uh, do, do, yeah, do, do, do you remember that challenge? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a friendly remember, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, though, uh, you may also remember that Nina's tournament, who won the uh, tournament uh, at the yeah, end of the uh, evening. So yeah, we, our whole recruiting strategy is purely around football now. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. This, this old fat bloke who was in goal at nearly 50 years old was uh, reliving uh, his youth that night. You, you pronounced cat wrong. You said fat, but you're actually yeah. a cat. <laughs> that man. That's very kind of you. <laughs> but my God, I ate for uh, a few days after that. But yeah, it was great fun. <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's a top man, Liam. You know him pretty well, Sean, but he's, uh, he's a top man. He does a great job for us, obviously. And now taking ownership of the sales customer in the same way as the as the purchase customer has been a massive part of them. That's really the future of the business. Well, that, that's all amazing. And honestly, it's great catching up with you. And uh, I really yeah. thank you very much for, for taking some time to have a chat.